A failed video on a failed deal about a failed console add-on that was never released. So my failed documentary. Several months ago, I set out trying to answer a question that had never really been asked. In the early 1990s, Nintendo partnered with Sony to make the CD add-on for the Super Nintendo, which, of course, was going to be called the PlayStation. However, Nintendo canceled the deal and then announced they would work with Philips instead of Sony to make the CD add-on. Only there is a misconception about that CD add-on. Many assume that that CD add-on for the SNES just simply became the CDI after the Nintendo Philips deal fell through. Only the CDI was actually already in development before Philips and Nintendo had begun working together. So the video I tried to make covered the Philips-designed CD add-on for the Super Nintendo. What drove me to ask this question was that prototypes for the Sony PlayStation with components linking back to the Super Nintendo exist, but no such systems have emerged related to the Philips CD add-on. So I set out to find more information about it, which sadly led me down a long, almost never-ending rabbit hole of potential leads and dead ends. So the video from here on out will be me explaining what I tried to research about the cancelled add-on, along with my attempts to contact the companies and individuals involved in the project. My first step was to contact Nintendo and Philips. Nintendo was quick to respond with an email directing me to their PR outreach folks, who then bounced me around for a bit and eventually told me that they don't have any records of the event, nor could they direct me to anyone involved in the project at Nintendo. But the kicker on the end of the email chain was that they are not spokesmen for Nintendo, nor did they want to be quoted in this matter, which I thought was odd because they are Nintendo's PR department. But this most likely was because they were an outsourced PR firm working for Nintendo. So my attempt to contact Nintendo somewhat ended there. I however followed up trying to contact Howard Lincoln, a former central player at the company. I soon found that he was banned from Twitter. For what? I can only assume is something to do with his involvement with the Seattle Mariners. I assume because Lincoln never seemed like the type to take an insult without response, and given the story of him and Tom Kalinske in the console wars almost coming to blows in an elevator, I'm pretty sure he was banned from Twitter for smack talking, so direct messaging him was out of the question. So I attempted to contact him via the Seattle Mariners PR department, of which he's on the board of uh, trustees for. I sent that email over six months ago and still no response. Phillips is a bit more frustrating to contact. They didn't have a direct PR outreach contact email, so I had to bug them via Twitter where I asked them if they still honored their CDI warranties. The joke fell flat, sadly, but I did end up getting a contact email for their communications department by going through one of their Dutch websites, where I was then very quickly informed that they had no records from that period in time, which was a bit of a shame, but I moved on to try and contact some other individuals who had worked at Philips from that period. However, some of the people I attempted to contact from Philips at that time seemed to be under somewhat of a criminal investigation, so they completely ignored my emails, potentially out of fear of me being some kind of reporter who wanted to know more than just stuff about the CDI and their involvement with Nintendo. So that left me with Jan Timmer, the CEO of Philips at the time in question. Only this man is like a ghost or a Navy SEAL who only emerges precisely when he needs to strike and then sinks back into the analog world completely free of digital contact information. But the only contact he has online is a website where you can hire him as an event speaker. I tried that, and no response. He's given speeches to Dutch Parliament. I contacted them and asked if they had Jan Timmer's personal PR people or his secretary's email. They told me they had no such records, despite the fact he's given speeches there on multiple occasions. There were a few other leads about him online that were dead ends. Tried a Dutch newspaper, they linked me back to the public speaking website. I tried another business associated with him, but it seemed to be attached to a website that hasn't been updated since 1999, so that email was probably met with the email equivalent of static. So ultimately, my quest to send an email to Jan Timmer about his knowledge of the CD add-on project ended. But out of pure curiosity, I inquired with a Dutch investigation firm to see how much a digital missing persons case would cost. They quoted me $158, which quite honestly, this reached an odd level where I think there wouldn't be any way I didn't end up with some sort of restraining order if I actually hired the PI. So I decided it's most likely best to leave Jan Timmer alone until a better method of contacting him presents itself. So sadly this project is stalled out. There isn't much information publicly available about the Nintendo Philips CD add-on deal. What we do know is that the deal ended with Philips having access to some of Nintendo's biggest gaming IPs for the CDI. And no CD add-on was ever pushed out by Philips nor has any prototype or design concept ever leaked from the affair. Which leads me into conspiracy talk, with basically the entire deal being a ruse by Philips to get access to Nintendo's IPs for the CDI, 
and they never had any intention of fulfilling the agreement to produce a CD add-on. This, however, isn't something I can prove or really support with those pesky sources and facts. So that's basically what I'm left with. Just some kind of random conspiracy theory and a bunch of former executives of companies that were immensely influential in the last decade, not wanting to talk about what they've done or accomplished. So the footwork for this video ate up a couple of weeks' time. I started this project over six months ago and hoped it would eventually resolve itself or some people would come forward in that amount of time without me potentially bothering them. So, in terms of research, I attempted to contact these companies and people involved and sadly hit a wall in terms of how far I could get without primary sources on the project. I figured this video was something fun I would share to show you what I put in to try and get this video off the ground. If you have any ideas on how to contact these people, please let me know. I would love to hear it. I've basically tried almost everything I can think of. But ultimately, I think this is a case of potentially lost history. The information about the deal only exists in the minds of a few people. The companies involved have pretty much moved away from keeping records of the event. I would have hoped companies as old as Philips, and especially as old as Nintendo, would have company historians. But it doesn't appear companies like Nintendo or Philips have an interest in preserving history the same way some random YouTube channel does. So I can't necessarily blame them for not having that investment in time and energy. But I plan to come back to this video at some point. Unfortunately, the time being, it's stalled out until I can find some other way to contact individuals involved in the project. But I hope this video was somewhat entertaining in terms of me explaining the effort I put in to try and get this video made. But thank you for watching the Stork Nerd today. I hope you have a great evening, day, or night, or whatever it is you're doing. Bye. Well, thank you for watching again. I want to let you know this isn't my typical video type. I just thought the entire experience was kind of funny and I thought I would share with you some of the stuff that I go through every now and then when trying to make a gaming documentary. If you want to watch videos where I've succeeded in making game documentaries, I highly recommend going back and watching my SVP video or my Hasbro Nemo video. But I want to thank you again for watching and also I want to thank you for your continued support of the show.